The New York Knicks are now 9 and 2 since trading for OG Ananobi, having won 7 of those games by double digits including a 26 point embarrassment of Deflo's raps, which signaled they did pretty damn well in the blockbuster trade with Toronto. To be fair, my raps are finally in rebuild mode after a winning era that consisted of a historically special championship season, not to mention all time. Three. A championship that now Indiana Pacer Pascal Siakam non-high perfectly stated belonged to everyone in a Players Tribune piece reflecting on his time in Toronto. Point is, with the Knicks now having an elite wing defender in Ananobi who albeit played as many games as D Flo in the 2019 playoffs, but was a Raptor legend who helped us get a few wins from the conference finals in the bubble a year after that, and also played 67 regular season games in the year we won the title. Now it could be New York basketball's time to be past the torch. The start with OG's been great, but I want to talk about whether or not Ananobi's the bona fide answer to New York winning a competitive Eastern Conference. Specifically Jalen Brunson, but in the regular season also Julius Randle, are both elite shot creators that in terms of the areas they score from, complement each other. Therefore, acquiring a strong downhill away from the basket cutter in Ananobi, who doesn't need to be manufacturing shots off the dribble himself, that can also cover up for the defensive miscues of Randall and Brunson with physical, active, and rangy lockdown clamps on the perimeter. Oh geez, what New York was missing against Jimmy Butler in the second round loss to Miami last spring. A question I have is whether or not New York's depth is good enough to legitimately make a championship run. Rebounding combo guard Josh Hart and the breakout sharpshooting shot creator Dante DiVincenzo, both of whom were acquired in the 2023 calendar year, have provided Jalen Brunson with top-notch insurance in the backcourt. Another question will be whether or not the powerful tandem of Brunson and Randall are a poised and consistent enough one-two punch to get it done at a high level in the night and day more physically demanding postseason. We know Julius has struggled with playoff consistency in the past throughout his first two appearances in 2021 and 2023. Even though Brunson held his own as a number one option last postseason for the Knicks, he earlier this season infamously drew criticism from WNBA head coach and former Spurs assistant Becky Hammond, who questioned his stature for a main option. Given winning in the playoffs obviously requires the team's top weapons to turn up their games to another level, therefore the most prevalent question for New York is whether or not those comments from Hammond are correct. We'll get to whether or not I think Brunson can use Hammond's comments as fuel for when it matters most, along with the most popular criticism for Julius Randle, plus where the Knicks rank among the top Eastern Conference contenders is on its way. Right quick, only 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. You may have heard me allude to DiVincenzo and Hart keeping Brunson fresh in the backcourt in the intro of this video, but in terms of in the front court, minus top center Mitchell Robinson who's out due to ankle surgery, the acquisition of Precious Achua in the Ananobi trade has paid dividends for Coach Tibbs. A video on this channel in 2021 after my Raptors traded for him in the deal for Kyle Lowry highlighted Achua's upside and in his best game of the 23-24 season against his former team, we got a first-hand look at it as Precious went off for 18 points on 9 for 10 made shots to go along with 11 rebounds, 4 of them which were O boards. If he was still on the wraps, he would have likely chucked up 4 threes and clanked 75%, but clearly Thibodeau and his staff have told the 6'8", 243-pound locomotive with a handle to strictly attack the basket. Precious took over 2 threes per game in December with the Raptors, but is taking less than half a 3 per game in January with the Knicks. Using his size and athletic force to his advantage, whether it was being a beastly role man or exploding off the dribble with his above average guard skill for a big, the new interior prominently focused Achua is a deadly weapon. As someone who used to watch him in person, it's good to see Precious healthy and going to work in New York. Without the unnecessary three point shooting volume hampering him like it did in Toronto, his rare combination of athleticism, dribbling ability, and stature are most effectively put to use. Last postseason for New York, to say that frustrated, out-of-line New Yorkers torched the next man we're going to talk about would be the understatement of the century. After Julius Randle went 3 for 14 from the field in a game which ended New York's season, Knicks fans tore down an in-arena poster and stomped on it. Native of the Bronx and ESPN Stephen A would also give us the first take. The Heat knocked out the Knicks here on ESPN. Everyone wants to hear Stephen A's reaction. The rest of the time is yours. Julius Randle, I am done with this man. 
I'm calling for the New York Knicks to trade him. You're not going to win with him. His body language, the second his shot is not falling, he's defeated, and it has contagious effect. It's like a virus that hits everybody, no pun intended, considering the times we live in it. Julius Randle is not the answer. Trade him. He needs to go. Because every postseason, this is what he does. And that's the way that it is. 14 field goals by Jalen Brunson. The entire rest of the Knicks, all of the eight players who played, 13 field goals. An absolutely pathetic offensive performance, and the New York Knicks season is over. Julius Randle is not the answer. Trade for Damian Lillard or call Anthony Towns. Find a way. Randle's had a strong 24-9 per game season in response to that take. However, Randle's legacy as a top player in this league will obviously be defined by what he does in the postseason. And as overly harsh as he was, Stephen A hit the nail on the head in terms of what Julius has done in the playoffs through his first two appearances. Just like ESPN, Stephen A has doubts about Randall, as you may have heard given it was big news a month ago, a guest talking head also for ESPN and Becky Hammond took shots at Jalen Brunson, calling him a 1A superstar who's too small to lead the Knicks into title contention. Given defensive game planning is the specific factor that becomes tougher to deal with for players in the postseason, teams being able to adjust and put their biggest and best defenders on smaller top weapons throughout the course of a seven game series has historically neutralized smaller number one options in the playoffs. The Stephen Currys and Isaiah Thomases of the world are anomalies, and 90% of NBA titles that are won are driven by players with physically imposing statures. However, given Brunson was exceptional in the 2023 playoffs, these comments from Hammond felt out of line. Head coach Tom Thibodeau, who claimed he hadn't seen the comments before being asked about them, said, quote, Anyone who doubts him doesn't really know him. Every opportunity that he's gotten, he's proven things. Don't get lost in the noise. It's always going to be something. Too short, too small, too thin, too strong, too something. Forget about all that. Just get ready to win. For Brunson, since the comments from Hammond, he's been the only player next to Luka and Giannis to be top six across the league in both points and assists per game. I think Jalen's potentially one of those anomalies next to Curry who won four chips for the Warriors as a number one option being 6-2, and Isaiah Thomas who won back-to-back -back chips for the Pistons as a number one option being 6-1. The like Isaiah 6-1 Brunson posted averages of 31-6-5 in last year's conference semifinals in what was the 27-year-old Villanova product's first postseason as a number one scoring option. So with that experience, and as he gains more of it in 2024, once he hits his prime, which based off his age is over the next year or two, if he stays healthy, the two-time NCAA champion has what it takes to fuel any team he's a part of to the ultimate glory in the association. Just think of how Dallas dropped off from a team that made the conference finals to not making the playoffs last season without the shot creation of Brunson. Brunson continuing to use Hammond's comments as fuel to his fire will be what it takes. In terms of OG, Coach Tibbs described this man's impact best, stating regarding the All-NBA defender and Raptor legend, a rare combination of power, strength, speed, agility, anticipation, and a big-time motor. He can make two to three efforts on a play and keep going. He never quits on a play. If I had to say where New York ranks in the Eastern Conference among contenders, I would put them as one of those teams next to the 76ers and Heat who outside of the Celtics and Bucks have a chance at getting through the East if a door opens up. I'm interested if OG's addition makes the Knicks contenders in your opinion though. Let me know for a chance at the shout out next video. Pause to read the answer from today's Speaks winner Huckleberry. Appreciate every take. This was your boy D-Flow and I'll see you next video.